Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Dana White sold on Conor McGregor at dinner, a potential superstar. You know, it's 2023, and Conor McGregor is still holding the crown as one of the most popular fighters in MMA and the UFC. Despite not stepping into the octagon for two years, UFC President Dana White can't help but sing his praises and acknowledge the impact McGregor has had on the sport. Whoa! During an exclusive chat with Big Boy TV, Dana White recollected the past moments about how McGregor's journey began. It all started with the resounding support from Irish fans, which caught White's attention. However, McGregor's charisma and star power were undoubtedly a game-changer for both him and the sport of MMA, he said. Sean Shelby, one of our matchmakers, had already had his finger on the pulse of Conor McGregor and knew what was going on. So they signed him. Conor came out here. He and I went to dinner. When I left the dinner, I called Lorenzo. I said, dude, I don't know if this kid can fight or not, but if he can wow. even throw a punch, he's going to be a huge superstar, man. Furthermore, Dana White mentioned that McGregor didn't just enter the scene, but he practically took the entire sport by storm. Interestingly, he faced off against some big names like Max Holloway, Dennis Siver, Dustin Poirier, and Chad Mendez. And he didn't just face them, he knocked them off one by one. Additionally, McGregor went on to become a two-division champion in 2016, solidifying his status as a true force to be reckoned with in the UFC. It's the stuff of legends, right? UFC's greatest titleless warrior, recently the best fighter in the UFC declared. And yes, it is none other than Dustin Poirier. His journey in the UFC has been like a roller coaster ride, full of highs and lows. But despite all the hurdles, he's faced some of the biggest names in UFC history and came out victorious against some while taking his share of losses, too. Now, guess what makes Poirier the iconic fighter? Back in the day, he climbed the UFC ranks pretty fast. In just nine years and 20 fights, he went toe to toe with some incredible fighters like the striking sensation. Anthony Pettis, the fan favorite Justin Gaethje, the former lightweight champ Eddie Alvarez, and even the Twitch streamer Max Holloway. One of the two championship fights of his career he lost may label him as the best fighter to never win a belt. Later on, his career defines Dustin as a fighter. He's like the dark horse of the division. He's got the potential to go the distance. He just needs the right matchups at the right time. It's a tough road back to the title. But if anyone has the skill set to do it, it's one and only Dustin. Whether you're talking about his skills inside the cage or his personality outside of it, there's one word that pretty much sums up Dustin Poirier for just about everyone, and that word is the diamond. He is also denoted by another name, Relentless. Poirier's style makes fights, and he can adapt to them all, to say the least. Sean Strickland's surprise, Valentina Shevchenko's revenge, and WWE-UFC merger confirmed. After the whirlwind of UFC 293, Ariel, Chuck, and Petacy are back in action, and they've got some hot topics to discuss in today's episode. First up, there's this bombshell news about the TKO group. It is a mega-merger bringing together the UFC and WWE, all under the watchful eye of Endeavor, the parent company. Now, this deal has people wondering what it means for the UFC's public image, its popularity, future TV deals, and whether they might have to tone down some of their more right-leaning politics now that they're a publicly traded company. Talk about a game-changer. Then there's Sean Strickland. It's high time we give this guy the credit he deserves for being one smart and calculated fighter. He's been flying under the radar, but he's starting to gather a fan following so it meant to explore what is the real reason behind it. Now, when it comes to the fight game, we've got some big names in the mix. What's next for Strickland, Israel, Adesanya, Drikus Duplessis, and whoever comes out on top in that showdown between Paulo Costa and Kamzat Chimaev at UFC 294? It's like playing chess with human chess pieces. And let's not forget that UFC Nochi happening this Saturday in Vegas. If Valentina Shevchenko takes another hit, could it spell the beginning of the end for the women's flyweight goat? Last but not least, there's a pretty exciting matchup in the co-main event. Kevin Holland versus the rising star, Jack Della Maddalena. Here, my friend, it is a clash of styles, and it's got fight fans buzzing. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, we'd love your support.
Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. Anderson Silva dismisses Adesanya comparisons. I'm in charge here. You won't believe what's been going on in the UFC world lately. So Anderson Silva, the former UFC middleweight champ, just had quite the reaction to Israel Adesanya's upset loss. In the main event of UFC 293, Adesanya took a hit and lost his middleweight gold in the process. It was a shocker for many, and it kind of put a pause on all that talk about Anderson Silva and the greatest of all time goat conversation. But guess what? Anderson Silva doesn't seem to mind at all. He posted something on Instagram, which he later deleted, but the message was pretty clear. Simply, he's taking a little jab at Adesanya and all those comparisons people have been making between the two fighters. Silva seems to believe they're not quite on the same level. At that moment, Anderson Silva didn't waste any time stirring the pot on social media. Although it's not the first time these two fighters have crossed paths. They both headed each other at UFC 234 back in February 2019. It was a pretty respectful showdown for their fans. Now, fast forward four years, and still there is some simmering tension and maybe even a hint of bad blood between the two fighters now. Now let's see how the tables can turn in the world of MMA. Dana White takes charge as UFC merges with WWE under TKO banner. Lastly, Dana White has been promoted to Chief Executive Officer, CEO, as part of the company's latest move. Also, the UFC and WWE have merged under the TKO Group, a sports entertainment company valued at $21.4 billion. Here, White's role is expected to stay the same, and he has emphasized limited crossover between the two businesses. In this ongoing situation, the board of directors of the TKO Group was chaired by Vince McMahon as executive chairman. Usually, it initiated with a total of 11 members, including key figures like Mr. Emanuel, Mr. Shapiro, and Mr. Khan. Later on, Vince McMahon emphasizes the long-standing partnership between Endeavor and WWE, highlighting their collaboration in areas like talent representation and media rights. He expresses optimistic thoughts regarding WWE's future growth and success as part of TKO, alongside UFC and Endeavor. Ari Emanuel, the CEO of Endeavor, sees the creation of TKO as an exciting development for both UFC and WWE. He believes that their continued connection within the Endeavor network will lead to accelerated growth and long-term value for shareholders. Together, UFC and WWE under the TKO group aim to provide unparalleled experiences to over a billion fans worldwide. The board of directors of TKO is led by Vince McMahon as executive chairman of the board and consists of 11 members, including Mr. Emanuel, Mr. Shapiro, and Mr. Khan. This is the culmination of a decades-long partnership between Endeavor and WWE across strategic initiatives, including talent representation and media rights, Mr. McMahon said in the statement released today, which was followed by a number of stars and executives from both companies, including White, ringing the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange. Given our collaborative, trusted relationship and Endeavor's incredible track record of success growing UFC, we believe WWE is optimally positioned for future growth and success as part of TKO. Our focus remains on delivering for our fans across the globe as we take the business to the next level alongside UFC and Endeavor. Endeavor boss Ari Emanuel added, the creation of TKO marks an exciting new chapter for UFC and WWE as leaders in global sports and entertainment. Given their continued connectivity to the Endeavor Network, we are confident in our ability to accelerate their respective growth and unlock long-term sustainable value for shareholders. With UFC and WWE under one roof, we will provide unrivaled experiences for more than a billion passionate fans worldwide. Now, it's crystal clear that TKO is shaping up to be an exhilarating platform for combat sports in the near future. Fans are eagerly keeping their eyes peeled, eagerly awaiting to see what unfolds in front of them. Dude, the anticipation is real. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.